now that uh, we can share the word of God. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Holy Spirit, continue to do your work in us and through us. And we just want to thank you now for truly your goodness has brought us to repentance. We have no ax to grind. We love everybody by an act of our will. We choose to love people. No, we don't have to love their actions and reactions, but we love them because, Lord, we know that that one act right there shows that we've been born again, that we are of, we are of God because we love the brethren. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn, if you will, to Luke 18. I'm sorry, 19, verse 10. It'll be up on the board. If I gave a title to this message, I'd probably call it God Did It or Things to Remember. Things to Remember and God Did It. And we always want to remember as the body of Christ why Christ came to the earth. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Most of us realize that we were lost. That's why we gave our life to Christ, became children of God through faith in Christ. But you know, he seeked us out. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. How many in here, if I ask you a question, you knew you were lost? You knew you were going to go to a burning hell? You knew that you were separated from God? Not many of us. And so God seeked us out by his spirit and showed us that we were lost. And if we died in that state, then we'd end up in a burning hell. And that's not God's will. Because the Bible says it's God's will that, that no man perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's God's heart. That's God's desire. And I thank God that he seeked us out and we are saved and remember, when we go out into the world, our job is to share Christ with others, to tell people about how we were saved. We need to let them know their condition outside of Christ because they are lost and they are gonna to go to a burning hell unless somebody tells them and shows them what God has done for them through Christ. The next scripture I want us to turn to uh, is found in 1 Timothy. First Timothy 1. Now I'm gonna try to talk a little lower because I'm blowing into this mic. So I'm gonna try to talk normal if that's possible for me. First Timothy. Let's see, we'll get the verse in a minute. One chapter, let's start with, let's start with 15. First Timothy. All right, here we go. You can read it on the board, Amplified. The saying is sure and true and worthy of full and universal acceptance that Christ Jesus, the Messiah, came into the world to save sinners of whom I am foremost. Now, Paul is talking there. And you see that foremost, here's what Paul is saying. I'm the worst sinner in the world. Think about it. We've always thought we were. But Paul says he was the worst sinner in all the world. And I've often wondered why, he had, why the Holy Spirit had him to pin that down. Because I have met people that felt they were the worst sinners and therefore they could not be saved. I've even said that about myself. Paul thought he was the foremost sinner because he persecuted the church and we know what he did. 
And I said, Lord, why is that written down? So I go to the next verse and listen, verse 16. But I attain mercy for the reason that in me as the foremost of sinners, now Paul's talking, Jesus Christ might show forth and display all his perfect long suffering and patience for an example. Now underline that, for an example. To encourage all of those at the shield who would thereafter believe on him, that is on Christ, for the gaining of, of eternal life. I'm going to say that. So Paul is an example. And you read, and we don't need to go into all that because we'd spend the whole half an hour on what type of person he was. He was a very religious man. He believed in God. But he didn't accept the Savior. He didn't accept the one that God sent to die on the cross where he could have eternal life. So Paul is telling us, or anybody that feels like, well, you know, I've just sinned too much, and God couldn't love me, and God can't save me. Well, you see, that's the devil's lie. Because Paul said he was the uttermost of sinners. He was the worst sinner of them all, and God's grace saved him. And that's an example for us that if God could save a man like Paul, the Apostle Paul, which later on he became the Apostle Paul, he could certainly save us. How many see that? All right, that's very important that you see. So you'll meet people, <coughs> if you're really witnessing for the Lord, that will tell you, no, I've just sinned too much. I'm just a horrible sinner. My mama told me I was the worst boy in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood back when I was a boy. My wife tells me the same thing. So I'm just, I'm too mean to be saved. Well, that's a devil's lie. No, you're not. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is an example. He's the uttermost of sinners. And you remember that. Now, I want you to look and go down to verse 10 uh, in, first, uh, in uh, first Timothy, back to uh, verse 10. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, I'll get it straight directly. 2 Timothy 1.10. Now, when Christ died on the cross, he carried our sins. Every sin that we've ever committed or every would commit <coughs> was nailed to that cross. A lot of Christians don't know, yes, our sins were nailed to the cross, but we were nailed to the cross. Our old nature was nailed to the cross, and God gave his nature to us. We have a new nature, and it's a, the nature of God that he has imparted into us when we receive Christ. But also, Christ experienced death, spiritual, uh, eternal death, death for you and me. In other words, I'm going to say something. You will never die. Yeah, right. yeah. I heard a little one amen over here in the corner. It sounded like, a, <laughs> sounded like a little crack or something in the wall. I said, you will never die. Yeah. I heard that. Well, let's see if that's true. Because anything I'm saying, I'm going to back up. And if I can't back it up, and if I misinterpreted it, I'll, I'll, I'll repent. <coughs> Listen to this, verse 10, you there? It is that purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us. His grace, his mercy, unmerited favor. He did it because he chose to do it because he loved us. Not how good we are, how bad we are, has nothing to do with our salvation. For the Bible is very clear, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're all in the same pot to start with. But I'm so glad he took us out of that pot and put us in the, the eternal pot. Never heard that language from the pulpit. Rose. 
pot, a pity pot, yeah. Okay, but look at that, look at that. Made real to us through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who annulled death. Everybody say, annulled death. What does that, what does that mean? That means it's gone. How could God do that? Because Christ suffered death for us. Just think, we have eternal right, life right now. If you're saved, and, and if you don't feel like you're saved, you need to talk to me. We need to get you saved. Because when you do draw the last breath, this body quits functioning, your spirit out of that body, and it's either going to go straight to hell or straight to heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord if you're saved. Absent from the body, if you're not saved, present with Satan. That's just the way it is. But that's not God's will. He loved us so much he sent his only begotten son to die and experience death for us. And, you know, if I die before some of you folks, don't look in the casket and say, you know, he looks better. I've never, I've never seen him look that good before in my life. If you're going to say that, say that now. <laughs> Who said, he, I need a lot of help? <laughs> See, we got to stop and remember what the Lord has done. He did it. He did it. He did it. He put us in Christ. Who's the greatest among you? <laughs> Thank you, my lovey dubby dooby dee dabby doo. <laughs> Has you, your husband ever called you a dooby dabby dee dabby dooby dee 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 dabby doo? Who says when you come to church you got to be sad? I don't see that nowhere in the Bible. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God is for us. He's not against us. He showed that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. We couldn't save ourselves impossible to save yourself. Well, if I work hard enough, well, how much work would you have to do to get saved? No, my friends. The Bible says it's by grace through faith that we are saved, not by works that any man can do. It's a free gift when we humble ourselves, repent of our sins, and receive Christ as our personal Savior. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Because when Christ raised him from the dead, he raised us. And now we are, have eternal life. And when you stop breathing, you're just going to step out of your body. And be with the Lord. And then we'll take your body. <laughs> Listen, I'm not making fun. But see, if we really see the picture, that ain't you. That's just your old body that you use down here. You can't use that body in heaven. It can't live in heaven. It's created to live down here. So God's going to give us a new body. Let's look that up into the scriptures. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
Turn to Philippians, and we'll, I'm going to come back to that. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. All right, look at verse 20. I want to start with verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Look what it says. But we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in Hanahan. No, which is in heaven. Our real citizenship is in heaven now. And from it also we earnestly and patiently awaits the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as Savior. Why? Look at the next verse. Who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation, to conform to and be like the body of His glory and majesty by exerting that power which enables Him even to subject everything to Himself. So there'll be a day when the Lord comes back at the, at the rapture. We have placed the body in the uh, casket. It's out there in the, in the cemetery. He will resurrect it. And our spirit will put on that new body. We'll be like the old one. It'll be like the Lord. A glorified body. And you'll be able to eat. I ought to get an amen. Somebody, somebody ought to say, Woo! You'll be able to eat. All the ice cream you want. And don't have to worry about gaining weight. See, God's a good God. He's got it all planned out. Why would man be so stubborn? Listen, I'm not talking about religion. I wouldn't give you two cents for religion. We're not talking about religion here. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about what Jesus Christ has done. That when you receive Christ, you will be a new creature and you will know it. You will know it and you'll act differently. You'll think differently. Or will you be perfect in all your actions and reactions? No, I can say right up front, no. But you are a brand new recreated person. That is your spirit man inside of you that you can't see is brand new. See, God did it. God did it. Now let's turn back to, to 2 Peter, I mean 2 Timothy. And I want to read that again. It is that purpose, it is that purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior, Christ, who annulled death. Oh, let's just go a little bit further in the Scriptures, make sure we got this right. Let's see, I want to go to, mm, let's see, here we go. Second uh, Corinthians, chapter 2. Fourteen, verse 14. But thanks be to God who in Christ Jesus always leads us. That's uh, Yeah, that's the right one. Mm -hmm. No, 2 Corinthians. No, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Hebrews, Hebrews. Chapter 2, verse 14. There we go. Beside this evidence, it was also established and plainly endorsed by God, who showed, 
his approval of it by signs and wonders and various miraculous manifestations of his power and by imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the believer according to his own will. Now turn to 14. Hebrews 2, 14. Since therefore these his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature that by going through death he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. So he conquered death, he conquered the devil, and he did it for us. Now that ought to make you shout. No effect. Death will have no effect on us. See, you can just cancel that from your mind if you're a believer, that you're walking with the Lord. Because, see, you've ta been taken out of death, out of the kingdom of darkness, and placed into the kingdom of the Son of God, into life. We have eternal life right now. Now think about it. If we have eternal life right now, then we have eternal life. No death will cancel that out. Hello? It's just a matter of us stepping out of these bodies and being present with the Lord. And he'll do it. He will resurrect us by his power. So, keep that in mind. How many at night, when you fall asleep, you really know when you fell asleep? <laughs> you just fall asleep, right? That easy, just that easy, and you wake up in the morning Instead of waking up in the morning at the house, you'll wake up in the morning in heaven. Just that easy. O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? None whatsoever. Death has no sting. So we can rejoice and be glad. Now I know people are human and we have to walk very softly in this area when we go to their funeral. Some of us want to shout, especially if we know that they're, they belong to the Lord and they're with God, we feel like doing a little one, two, three. But for those that are still, don't understand. Now, Paul brings something up in First uh, Thessalonians. Turn to First Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's up on the board. Here we go. It's hard for me to see that. That's, that's it. Okay, here we go. Furthermore, brethren, we beg and admonish you in virtue of our union with the Lord Jesus that you follow the instructions which you've learned from us about how you are to walk so as to please and, and gratify God. Now that's our responsibility. Once that we're saved, we want to glorify the Lord and gratify God. As indeed you are doing, Paul says to the Thessalonians, and that you do not e even more and more abundantly attaining yet greater perfection in living this life. I'm a looking for First Thessalonians. Where are you at? Excuse me for a moment. I'm taking a minute off. I don't know why I'm getting tangled up with these scriptures up here, but must be one of those days. Am I shook up? No. First Thessalonians 4:13. That's a good scripture. Now also we would not have you ignorant, brethren, 
and cisterns, about those who fall asleep, that is, those that have died and passed away in death, so that you may not grieve for them as the rest do who have no hope beyond the grave. Now that's powerful, isn't it? Amplified. We don't have to grieve. It's okay to grieve, but not like those that have no hope. Because it's natural to grieve and, and miss somebody. I mean, if Susan went to California for three weeks, I'd probably grieve for three weeks. My mind is going where it should not go. <laughs> Did I hear somebody say amen <laughs> out there? <laughs> if you just leave three weeks and give me breath, I mean, give me rest. <laughs> but we're not that way. We don't even like to depart from one another. She goes shopping for two hours. I cry and grieve for two hours. <laughs> Y'all think I'm kidding, don't you? <laughs> it's almost that bad. <laughs> I love that woman. All right. <laughs> Deborah, love me now. <laughs> love me. <laughs> but see, God has given us a great salvation, and that's why the Hebrew writer says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How many out there, if I, uh, let's say I have a $100 bill. I'll get some of you woke up. <coughs> Susan said, you better put that back in your pocket, boy. <laughs> oh, I can't get my wallet out. Well, anyway, if, <laughs> if I had $100, okay, how many would reject that? Nobody would. And yet God gives, has offered us eternal life, not in these old bodies, not in this old world, but eternal life with a new body, a resurrected body. You feel good 24-7, all the time. Feel good. Just being in heaven will make you feel good. No more taxes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more problems. That's what God offers his creation. But because of Adam's sin, we know why, why the Lord had to come because of the disobedience of one man, Adam. We all became sinners. We inherited it from him. But because of the obedience of one man, Christ Jesus, we have been fully justified in the Lord. That's what the Lord has done for us. Turn, if you will, to Romans 5, 1. Romans 5, 1. Look at this. Chapter 5. Verse. Therefore, since we are justified. Listen to what it says. Therefore, since we will be justified later on. No, no. Look what it says. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous right now, when you accept Christ and give it a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So peace comes into your life. When I first received Christ, I tell you, I couldn't, talk, I couldn't quit talking about the, the Lord. It was awesome, justified, sanctified by the Lord God Almighty. The Lord did it. It's done. It's finished. And as we believe it and accept it, See, that's what changes our life. When we understand what the Lord has done and meditate on it and be conscious of it. Now, look at yourself right now. 
How do you see yourself? Because that's how you're going to act and react. If you see yourself a child of God, God is your heavenly Father. If anything does happen physically, you're with the Lord. You're going to, you got eternal life right now. All your sins are forgiven. But Bob, what happens if I make a mistake? Praise God for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we've been cleansed from all unrighteousness after we confess it, what unrighteousness do you have? Thank you. Appreciate that over there. See, once the revelation of that hits our spirit and our conscious part of our being, we get all excited. We want to tell everybody about Jesus. Now, you should feel just as clear in peace right now, sitting right here. You, should, you have nothing that God is holding against you. We've been reconciled, God in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself. And if you're feeling condemnation and good for nothing, that's the devil working on you, and you need to tell him to go back home to you know where. Walk in the Spirit. I mean, it is so exciting when you learn, and I know many of you are there. So I'm just encouraging you, if you are there, continue to walk. Now, the Bible says in Jer Jeremiah 1.12, you don't have to put it on the board, it says, but God watches over his word to perform it. Now, I'm going to spend about five more minutes or ten, and I'm going to let you go. How do you appropriate what the Lord has done? How do you appropriate this salvation to make it a reality in your life? Well, the Bible says we don't have to go up in heaven trying to bring Christ down. We don't have to go into Hades and try to bring him up. It's nigh thee. How, how close is it? Nigh thee on your lips. If thy will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved, period. That's how easy it is. We don't I have to do some? I just told you what to do. You've got to believe that Christ died on the cross, that Christ bore your sins, Christ bore your death, Christ bore your old nature, Christ bore it all on himself when he died on that cross. And you accept that and release yourself from that old thinking and realize you have been made righteous in the sight of God by what Christ did on that cross. Oh, just let that sink in. Wow. Wow. Isn't that amaz amazing? The decisions we make today affect our tomorrow. So we get into the scriptures and see what the Lord has done. Christ came to this earth to save and to seek that which was lost. And I tell you what, he, he provided salvation for us. He bore our sins. He bore the death of mankind on himself. And we've been set free to live for the Lord and to love him. Now let's look at it from God's viewpoint for a moment. Think of how much God loves you. He really loves you. Susan, you got a minute, darling? Uh, two minutes. Would you mind coming up? <laughs> Now, the, 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 you know, how many of you know God's got feelings? Yeah, God's got feelings, yeah. Let's say that I'm always reaching out for her and trying to give her my love, but she rejects me. How do you think, how do you think that makes me feel? Think of God. You know, God's reaching out to his children. I want to spend a little time with you. I love you. And we back up. Well, I'm too busy. I hadn't cut the grass in uh, two years, so I better cut it. <laughs> see, see, I want you to see it from God's viewpoint. God wanted a family. 
That's why we have that there, the family right up there. God wanted a family. You know, when girls get a certain age, they want kids. Didn't hear one amen on that. <laughs> I love you. Now, here's where it, this is what happens when you fully realize that God loves you and you reach, and God reaches out to you and you finally realize it's sort of cold out there, isn't it, where you're at right there. So just come into my arms. Oh, wow. Lord, can we camp out here for a while? Build some tabernacles down here. Th thank you, darling. You will. Okay. You can turn me loose. <laughs> Grasp it. God's reaching for every one of us. He loves us. Period. Well, I'll try to do better. No, don't try to do better because you'll do worse. Come as you are. If you're not a Christian, come just as you are. If you are a Christian and you realize you've really been, listen to me now, you've really been rejecting God's love. Because if I get too close, Thank you. All right. Yeah, can you hear that now? When we can come to that, you run to God. The other day, I gave out a, I gave out one of my tracks to this little boy. He must have been five years old. I gave him one of my little Bibles. We get those out wherever we go. He took it, he looked at it, and he looked at me, and he ran over to me, and he grabbed me and hugged me, and then walked away. Man, my heart melted. I wonder, is that the way God feels when we run, when he blesses us and we run up and we hug him and we say, oh God, thank you. Oh, and God just loves us, loves us, loves us. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You knew when you grabbed a hold of him, you might not let go. <laughs> Supper's ready. <laughs> thank you. He loves you. And what's in our mind? Yeah, but you know, I told this lie the other day. He loves you. You don't love the lie because the lie will destroy you if you keep that uh, to become a habit. He loves you for yourself. I know Susan loves me because I feel it. Say that again. <laughs> See the little doubt in my mind. Oh, you really love. Yes, God loves you. Why not receive it, my friend? Why go on in your life feeling rejected? For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you would believe in him, you would have eternal life. Oh, my friend, don't reject his love. 
Come into his arms and he will receive you. See, the revelation is coming down the pipeline and it's going to hit this church one day. And just like we started dancing this morning, I danced all night. Oh, some of you say, yeah, yeah, you remember when you danced all night. I danced all night. Remember that? The sun was coming up and you were still dancing. Well, that's going to come over to the spiritual realm. And Rose is going to lead us in that dance. <laughs> she can do it. <laughs> because words can't express it. You just have to experience it. And most of you know what I'm talking about. But this goes on a DVD. The war's over. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My yoke is light. Come unto the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now that anyone in this place today that never have given their life totally to you and meant it with all their heart and believed and confessed, if they've never done that, may this be the day that they get themselves out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of the Son of God and receive eternal life through Christ Jesus. We pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.